Right, so in the last example, we looked at how to make a line chart, start to style it and make it really cool. This is where we ended up. Um, let's now talk about adding multiple data sets. So here we're um, charting world population over time, including predicting into the future. Um, but let's say we wanna also include the number of people living in urban areas, and maybe we'll see some kind of correlation or dissonance between those. So I've gone ahead here and just added these data sets. Um, so this is a modified version of the population data set from before, in this case, going from 1960 to 2020. And I've uh, added this urban uh, population data set as a separate variable. So now instead of call it being called data, it's called population. And the second one's called urban. The labels are the same because they both map to the same years. And I've got my title here. Um, my template is the same as before. So all of these options are exactly the same. All the stuff down at the bottom is the same, but we're gonna look at how to modify the data sets section so that we can chart both of these side by side. So um, let's go ahead and add our first data set up inside here. So before we only had one, now we're gonna do two. So our first data set will be uh, population. We are going to set fill to false again, so we don't have that um, color down below. Um, and let's set our border color to be uh, orange again, just so we can kind of see that. And our label will be total, oops, total population. I cannot spell, uh, t spell type and talk at the same time. Population, and again, this is in millions. And, oh, I forgot a comma here. And let's run this and see, cool. Here's our world population going from 1960, 1990, and 2020. Now you'll notice I added this label here that says total population in millions, and we'll see in a minute why that's important as we add our second data set. Then after we define it here, we do a comma, another set of curly brackets, and we can specify a second data set. So in this case, it's urban, fill will also be false, our border color, let's make it different so that we can see it. Oops, RGB, we'll do like a blue. And our label here will be urban population, also in millions. And now you can see we've got these two lines on our chart um, and already like some cool things we start to notice as world population increases in the 20th century and early 21st century, um, we also see this steady kind of matched uh, increase in urban population. And now when I hover over here, um, this dot says urban population, this dot says total population. So this is really helpful. We can keep track. Um, you know, we could have a legend at the top. If we put this back like this, we would get a color corresponding to each of these lines. Maybe this is how you wanna do it. I think it's really busy and confusing. So for one thing, we've got a lot of text here. Maybe we could cut in millions because it's over here. Um, but I think it also restates what should be clear in our chart. Um, and then the last reason is that color, um, especially as our charts get more complex, might be a really hard thing to tell the difference between these many lines if we've got a whole bunch of colors going. Um, so I tend not to like the legend and instead, I think these tooltips are a really useful way of kind of understanding. We'll also see we can add labels and other kinds of stuff later if we want to. Um, so that's that's it. That's all we need to do to be able to add a second data set here. Um, you could certainly add another one and that would be a good exercise to try and add a third set of data. Maybe it's population. Maybe you do something else from the same time period like GDP. Um, but yeah, we just add into this data set section another chunk and we can add many, many data sets to our visualization.